Okay, here we go. Hello, everybody. If you guys want to say hi so I can see who's here, that'd be super cool. Uh, I'm super nervous, so bear with me. I thought we could get a little bit for a few minutes because Ava's getting ready for bed and she wants to come in and say hi to everybody. And then um, after she goes to bed, I will tell the story and then maybe we can chat a little bit more at the end too. And I'm going to take my glasses off for you guys because that reflection in the screen is killer. Hi! Eeg is here. And Emily, hello. And Kit, oh. And Black Birch, hello everyone. This is honestly more people than I expected for my first live stream. So thank you for being here. Um, it makes me feel a lot better to actually be here. <laughs> I have been an anxious mess all day, so there is a fair way to kind of have to go here. I'm also going to read it to you because I wrote it out so that I don't forget it. Um, I don't think I can do this because I don't want her to come in in the, 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 the middle of the story and I told her she could come say hi. Oh, is it being staticky? That's not cool. So I'll just try unplugging it and not having this and just using the computer mic. Is that better? Oh, look, my daddy's here. Hi, daddy. <laughs> All right. Is that better, guys? Is the static gone? Yes. Good. Okay. We'll just use the computer mic then, and I will have to see about getting something else before I do another live stream. Everybody can say hi to my husband here. <laughs> he's getting Ava into bed for me because he's awesome. Well, I say for me, but you know, that's uh, her kid, his kid too, her. <laughs> Can you tell we're having some anxiety issues? Hi, Odin. <laughs> yes, I think Ava's brushing her teeth right now. You guys, she's getting ready to lose like two more teeth and I cannot even deal with how fast she's growing up. It's that hashtag mom life. I feel very awkward just talking to the screen, by the way. I can see all your comments here, but this is a very awkward format. I'm usually used to just talking to the camera. So this is a good time. And I got my tea. I hope you guys brought something to drink, too. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> I feel weird not having my glasses on, too. But like I said, that glare was distracting me. So let's see the computer screen. That's the fun thing about wearing glasses. Yes, it is. I've been doing uh, like that curly girl stuff, too. And then getting it cut shorter. It curls so much now. <laughs> That's what Ava's doing, Stieg. She's brushing her teeth and going to bed, but she gets to have water. So, yes, it is a it is a very bloody and violent story. This one's, I I think this one's actually worse than the uh, than the uh, Beast of Chevaudan. That's the one I was trying to remember. I think this story is actually worse than that one. So it will be fun. Oh, you got a new puppy, Black Birch? That is so great. I love puppies. I want a puppy, but we have three dogs. And three dogs is... That's a lot, especially for my husband, who is a cat person. <laughs> yes, it is worse than the French one, Stieg. It is much worse. Yes, exactly, Black Birch. You have to post your dogs to social media or they don't exist. Five cats. I cannot imagine five cats. The most we've had was two. And one of them was a very, very horrible cat. Kit will remember. And and my dad, if he's still here, he'll remember that horrible cat, Kisa. Kisa was the worst. 
And then the other cat, Ava got to name the other cat. Yes, we can be cat lovers and dog lovers at the same time, Emily. Come in, Ava. Because Ava loves both. Here she comes. Come say hi. You can say hi to everybody because we're just on the computer microphone now. Hello. And Odin's watching. Hi, Odin. And Grandpa's watching. Hi, Grampy. And Stieg. Hi, Stieg. And my friend Emily. We got a lot of, a lot of several people here. Five people. Hi, Emily. Link that Molly said, Ava, sweet love. <laughs> and you're forgetting that when you only had two cats with me, I found one point one point had more than thirty. Yes, I did. Yeah, you did. And uh <laughs> we had one before Ava was born too. We had Tempra and you had Valen when we met. Mm -hmm. Because I was telling you guys about the cat that Ava named. Ava had named her Emily. And then we recently, and well, like last year, had a cat stay with us for a while. Her name was Leia, mm -hmm. but um, I was allergic. We didn't get to keep her. Yeah, it was sad. Were you allergic to any other kitties that you had? Well, I've always been allergic to kitties. It just got worse. Mm -hmm. So, like Birch said, hi, hello, Sparrow family. Hello. All right, it's time for you to go get in bed, okay? Good night, monkey. Good night. I love you. I love you, too. <laughs> <laughs> Ava gets a lamp time every night to help her wind down and settle into bed. But... Yeah, I my, my allergy used to be mild. It used to be a very mild allergy and uh it would just be like you know like some stuffy nose and some sneezing but then when we had leia and before that i had a friend who had a, a cat and uh when i would go visit my friend i would get um allergic conjunctivitis which is all the same symptoms as pink eye just because of allergies not because of pink eye so that was not fun Yep, pink eye, just because of allergies, not because of infection or anything. It sucked. <laughs> I was so sad because Leia is such a sweet cat. So, okay, well, if you guys are ready, since uh, Ava's getting into bed and her lamp time is getting started, she will stay in bed for her lamp time at least. We can, uh... <laughs> hi. Yes. Well, tell your mom I said hi, Kit, or, you know, hi, Kit's mom. Um, I'm losing my train of thought. I'm sorry, guys. I am so scattered right <laughs> sometime. But if you guys are ready, we can get into this very gruesome story of the Bedberg Werewolf. So. Oh, hi, Mom. Yee. My parents are watching for this lovely, bloody, gruesome story. So fun times for them. <laughs> All right. So I wrote this whole thing up as like a story. So it should be fun for you guys to listen to. So welcome to the first live edition of Monsters and Mythology. I'm TM Sparrow, writer and homeschooling mom, and today I'm going to tell you all the gruesome story of the Bedberg werewolf. So when you think of the Middle Ages, especially in the terms of the supernatural, you probably immediately think of the witch hunt hysteria. Witch trials are a well-known, well-documented historical event. From Europe to the American colonies, the fires of hysteria took the lives of many women and even men whose only crimes were being different. What you may not know is that there were many people, mostly men, who were accused of and killed for being werewolves. Much like the so-called witches of the time, these people had supposedly made pacts with the devil and were given the ability to change into a wolf via magical objects or ointments. 
These men would then change into wolves and kill and eat people, mainly women and children. But occasionally men as well. <laughs> Perhaps these were serial killers who thought they could avoid the guilt of their crimes by blaming the devil. If this is the case, they may not have been werewolves in fact, but monsters akin to serial killers like Jeffrey Dahmer. One of the most well-documented werewolf trials is that of Peter Stump, the Bedburg werewolf. There exist two copies of an English translation of a German pamphlet of which there are no remaining copies. One of these English copies can be found at the British Museum and the other is kept at Lambeth Library. This pamphlet, which is 16 pages long, details, okay, contains the story of Stump's life, his alleged crimes, and details of his trial, including testimony from his neighbors and witnesses to the crimes. The story that unfolds, regardless of its veracity, is chilling. It's impossible to grasp the true horror of this story without including all of the details. So I will warn you up front, this story is not for the faint of heart. It's bloody and horrible, including some pretty awful deaths of children, even the unborn. So continue at your own discretion. Whoa, a beach that's a historical site for witch trials. I bet that is fascinating. And I hope you guys are enjoying the story so far. This is exactly what it's like to record a video, only you guys get to see all my mistakes live. So, in the 1850s, the German town of Bedburg had a problem. It started with the livestock, a missing sheep or goat, a slaughtered cow, but the problem only grew from there. More and more livestock went missing or turned up half-eaten and mangled. Before long, people started to go missing as well. A woman, a child, sometimes, but not often, a man. Sometimes they were never found, but sometimes the bodies were discovered at the edge of the woods. Something was hungry, and it was feeding on the people of Bedburg. This went on for years, the, and the people lived in fear of whatever creature haunted the woods. They spoke of it in hushed whispers for fear of drawing its attention. A few hunters, brave or maybe foolish, tried to hunt the creature down and end the town's nightmare. But they too became victims of its voracious appetite, their bodies left behind as a warning. But the people had reached their limit. They didn't hunt the creature again, but they did set up watch. Patrols of men guarded the forest at night until they spotted it at last. A wolf, huge and ferocious, its eyes glittering like flame in the night. And yet, it was missing one of its front paws. Still, it slunk through the shadows, seeming not to notice the men watching it. For a moment, they were frozen in fear. The thing that was huge, larger than any normal wolf. One of the men called out, and the moment was shattered. The alarm was raised, and the wolf's head perked up. It looked at them, and its eyes held such knowing that the men almost froze once more. The creature turned and ran, and the men gave chase until it disappeared into the tall grass of a farmer's field. The men entered warily, but they found no sign of the beast. They split up, torches torches held aloft to light their way. Still, they could not find the wolf. Instead, they found the old farmer, Peter Stumpf, sweaty, panting, and naked. He thanked them profusely for scaring the beast away. He had already lost his own son to it. The boy had only been 12 years old. He had heard the commotion, he said, and jumped straight out of bed to see what was going on to protect his daughter from whatever the threat might be. The wolf had almost had him before the noise of the patrol scared it away. Hello, Chewy. My own ferocious werewolf is here, too. Ah, uh, hi, Milk Dud. Yay. Okay. So. And they almost believed him. 
<laughs> you have more interesting Tuesdays than I do, Stig. Stig. My brain isn't working. Okay. So they almost believed him. Something just didn't sit right about the old man's words, though. Hadn't they already been chasing the wolf when they entered his fields? Would the wolf have stopped to hunt prey when they were giving chase? And then it clicked. Peter Stumpf, the old farmer who lived at the edge of the town and kept to himself, was missing his left hand, just as the wolf had been missing its front left paw. They arrested him on the spot. At first, Peter denied everything. He swore he was innocent, just an old farmer trying to get by. But the town's leaders didn't believe him. They put him on the rack and tortured the confession out of him. It was true, he said. He had been born wicked with a taste for blood. So at only 12 years of age, he began to practice black magic, and the devil had given him a magical belt. When he wore this belt, he was transformed into the likeness of a greedy, devouring wolf, strong and mighty, with eyes great and large, which in the night sparkled like fire. A mouth great and wide, with most sharp and cruel teeth, a huge body, and mighty paws. All he had to do was remove the belt to regain his human form. This is where things get truly gruesome. Stumpf confessed to killing and eating 14 children, including his own son, and two pregnant women. His son, he said, he had taken out into the woods one day where he killed the boy and ate his brains. The pregnant women, he claimed to have carved... What are you doing? Eating your brains. <laughs> <laughs> My husband, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if she records with me in the room, it takes two times as long. Yes, with Ben here, it takes two, two and a half hours to record a 30-minute video. <laughs> you spot the dad. Okay. Where was I? Eating brains. <laughs> well, I'm glad he's adding drama. Seems more like comedy to me. <laughs> he is. He ate his son's brains. All right. The pregnant women. He claimed to have carved the fetuses from their bodies and eaten their hearts. I don't know if he confessed to it or not, but he was also accused of having an incestuous affair with his daughter. And it was said that he also had an intimate relationship with a distant relative, which was also considered incest at the time. Although he did confess to having intercourse with a succubus sent to him by the devil. <laughs> Chewy is too much of a big baby to be a werewolf. He really is. He's the biggest mama's boy and the biggest baby. Yelps and sticks. <laughs> he does. He yelps if a piece of grass touches him. <laughs> All right. For these truly horrible crimes, Peter Stumpf was given a brutal death. They strapped him to a wheel and peeled away strips of his flesh with red hot pincers. Then they took the blunt end of an axe and broke his arms and legs to prevent him from rising from the dead, which honestly seems a bit excessive since they then chopped his head off and burned his body. They also strangled his daughter and mistress and burned them on the same pyre. As a warning against any similar behavior, they erected a pole and placed a torture wheel and a figure of a wolf on it. At the top, they placed Peter Stump's severed head. Imagine having to see that in your town square every day. The Middle Ages were such a time to be alive. So there's no way to know if Peter Stump was truly guilty of his crimes. Most people will confess to anything under torture. And when you consider the social situation at the time, it truly calls his guilt into question. You may remember from your history classes that Europe in the Middle Ages was embroiled in extreme religious conflict. <laughs> they were very, very cray, as Stieg says. Uh, so yes, the Middle Ages, Europe in the Middle Ages was embroiled 
See, and this is what it's like to record YouTube videos, you guys. But usually I can do another take and cut the bad stuff out and you're just getting it all live. Okay. We'll start this sentence over again. <laughs> You may remember from your history classes that Europe in the Middle Ages was embroiled in extreme religious conflict. There were the Crusades, of course, but there was also the rise of Protestantism, which Catholics did not take kindly to. I won't go into all the details, but it is important to note that Peter Stumpf was a Protestant, and at the time of his execution, Bedberg had only recently been taken over by a lord who was decidedly Catholic. Peter Stumpf was a wealthy farmer who kept to himself, an easy target if the new lord was looking for someone to make a political example. So, was Peter Stumpf a serial killer or an innocent victim of religious persecution? We'll probably never know for sure. And that is the wonderfully gruesome tale of the Bedberg werewolf. Meanwhile, in the background, we have the wonderful, playful tale of the bed, uh, uh, bed top chew. <laughs> so, I hope you guys enjoyed that really awful story. Yeah. Yeah, so that was a real thing. You can go see the pamphlets in England if you're ever there. So... I had planned at this time to do kind of like maybe a Q&A if anyone is interested, if you have any questions about, yes, it was a lot of dead kids to eat and it's pretty messed up. And this is why a lot of cannibalistic serial killers end up being called the werewolf of such and such place. Um, that was actually a nickname that was given to Jeffrey Dahmer and Albert Fish. And I think at least one more serial killer, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, yeah, do you guys have any questions about werewolves? Is the pamphlet available online? I did not see it when I was doing my research. Um, if you did enough digging, you probably could find it. Did you say the, uh, did they say where the, uh, they were on this planet? Yes, um, one you can find at the Lambeth Library, and one is at the British Museum. So I think have Hubby back here uh, is going to see if you can find it. I feel like with, with, the, with the so much stuff being online these days, I would be very surprised if you can't find it online somewhere. Yes, I'm with you, Emily. I bet the werewolf was beautiful. I love werewolves. Obviously. I even wore my wolf earrings today. Wolves are pretty awesome. But yeah, so questions, comments about werewolves, writing, homeschooling, hashtag mom life. <laughs> I will be happy to answer or we can just chat a little bit. If you guys want to. Uh, I know, Steve, like me liking werewolves, what a shock. Who would have guessed? It is not like I do videos on werewolves like almost every full moon. Which, by the way, tonight is a full moon. They call it the strawberry moon. Because all the, all the moons have different nicknames. January, they call it the wolf moon. So, uh, guess which one's my favorite? <laughs> and you have the harvest moon in the fall. I think there's a hunter's moon at some point. I have all the different moon names. I have a link on my phone that I can look at. So, that's a fun time. If you have questions about the werewolf mythology in my, uh, in my books, in the Children of Remus series coming up, uh, I would be happy to answer questions about that because I love my werewolf mythology. As an amusing note, if you search uh, the Bear Book Werewolf pamphlet, one of the suggestions for, for that is uh, Peter Stone, but the mm -hmm. very next suggestion is Donald Trump. <laughs> that is because the... the names are really rhyming. Well, not just <laughs> that. The mistress that was mentioned in the story... 
the, the distant relative that Peter Schnumpf was having an affair with, her last name was actually Trump. So, fun fact. But my favorite type of werewolf from all around the world and mythologies. That is a tough question. Like, there's some pretty standard werewolf lore that you can go through, and then there's been a lot of books and movies about werewolves. It's really hard to pin down just one favorite. Um, I mean, other than, you know, my own werewolf lore. Uh... Uh, of the ones that I've covered, I think, I don't know. I like the story, it's not really werewolf, but I do really like the story of um, Romulus and Remus, obviously. I mean, I called my series Children of Remus, but them being raised by a wolf yeah, The Beast of Javodon is a really fascinating story because it is an actual historical fact that these people witnessed these attacks and stuff. And, you know, so some people think it was a werewolf. That was the idea at the time. But most likely, it was probably like a hyena. Honestly, from the descriptions, it sounds like it was a hyena that somebody had captured and it got loosed. Uh, thoughts on underworld werewolf lore. You know, I really don't know much about the underworld lore. It has been a really, really long time since I watch a an underworld movie. Um, I saw the first one, and then I saw one in the theaters when I was in college. And it was very, <laughs> it was very gory. And, uh, a fun story. I had a panic attack leaving the theater, but that was before I knew it was a panic attack. Yeah, somebody should do a werewolf Broadway play. A werewolf musical. Can you imagine? <laughs> they did Jekyll and Hyde. It'd be like Wolverine the musical. <laughs> yeah, there's a YouTube video Maybe. called Wolverine the Musical. If you've never seen it, you need to look it up because it's hilarious. The, the only thing what I would have to say is that we would have to get Hugh Jackman to play the werewolf. Hugh Jackman as a werewolf in the werewolf musical. You know, I could see that. That would be pretty great. You said it's at the British Museum, right? Yes, the British Museum. The British Museum offers a virtual tour, actually. So, yes, you probably could actually go and see it. Well, that's cool. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but... <clears throat> Yeah, I read or well, I listened to the audiobook of the first Dressed and Files novel. Um, and I liked it pretty well. But when I tried to do Full Moon, it was um I couldn't get into it. So I did not really get into all the different kinds of werewolves that were in that. And um yeah. You see, I would watch a werewolf musical, too, because I love Broadway musicals. And uh, werewolves and Broadway musicals like doing my favorite things. And Jekyll and Hyde, the music in Jekyll and Hyde is really good. So if you've got something like that. I mean, people go watch Sweeney Todd. And if people watch Sweeney Todd, I think we would love a werewolf musical. And I think the closest you get is uh, Into the Woods. Because they have Little Red Riding Hood and the Big Bad Wolf. So I think that's the closest you get to a werewolf in a musical, to my knowledge. Unless you count the, you know, whole Jekyll Hyde transformation. But that's like the good person and the evil person and humanity's dual nature and all that. So uh, the movie for Into the Woods uh, kit is actually pretty good. I really like it. And I have not actually watched Legally Blonde the musical. I've heard one song from it, and uh, it's, it's actually pretty catchy. So, but yes, people probably will watch anything if you hype it enough. Cats is like the third or fourth highest grossing Broadway musical of all time. So, I think werewolves would do really well. 
Okay, do we have any other questions? I feel like I'm like letting you guys down with the answers to the questions here because I just, a lot of that lore stuff, I'm not really. Yes, Into the Woods is strange, but very good. I really enjoyed it. So, and I mean, they made Mean Girls. If they can make Mean Girls into a musical, you can make anything into a musical. And the Mean Girls musical is actually pretty good, in my opinion. But, yeah, not everybody's going to like everything, but that's cool. We can all still get along, if, even if we don't. I don't remember that. It's been a long time since I've watched this. I'm going to have to watch it again now. Remus Lupin and the Harry Potter werewolves. Um, you know, I thought it was a really interesting take. On there. Yeah, I remember she was the baker's wife. I just don't remember her dying. So now I got to rewatch it. But uh, Remus, my thoughts on Remus Lupin and the Harry Potter werewolves. Um, you know, you don't get a lot of in-depth lore on it, but I did really like it. I love Harry Potter. Um, you know, it's not a perfect series like you're never gonna have a perfect series but I did like the werewolves in that I liked the way there was a potion that let them retain control of themselves during their transition you know during their time of the month <laughs> uh but yeah overall I liked them that definitely made for an interesting end to Prisoner of Azkaban So, all right, I think we're running out of things to say. So if nobody has any other questions, we might just go. Yeah, that's the, yeah. Stieg makes a very good point. That was where I really ran into problems. I try to ignore most of what JK Rowling says that's not in the books because it's this whole no werewolves as a metaphor for HIV or AIDS was super, super problematic because, you know, you had that one, especially that one really bad werewolf that would bite people on purpose and especially children to infect them. And it's just, yeah. But there are people out there that actually do that. I mean, we're not going to get into that conversation right now. Same. The the real problem was that except for all, all except for, you know, Lupin, except for Lupin, they were all evil. So it was really. So, yeah. Like Kit said, if it's not in the books, I'm pretty much just disregarded these days because Rowling has just become very, very problematic these days. So. It, uh, yeah, yeah, she it does seem like she really tries to kill her fan base, but that was one of those things that it really felt like she was trying to sell more books. It was such a long time ago she said that. I think it was even before I met that guy back there that she said that, and it was... The good news, guys, my werewolves are not a metaphor for anything. Yeah, that is authorial intent and and separating the art from the artist as a whole in-depth conversation that I don't really have answers to because, you know, I'm still learning and growing. Reveal more about my werewolves. What do you have? I mean, what do you want to know? I am more than happy to talk about my werewolves. I can tell you there are two factions two main factions of werewolves. There's there's more than one, but there are two main factions. There are the werewolves who believe that they are descended from Remus, um, of Romulus and Remus, that he was gifted the ability to change his shape by Lupa, the wolf who raised him, and Romulus. 
um, and they believe that they are, they're like guardians for humanity. Uh, no, Romulus is not the other faction. The other faction are the wolves who believe they are descended from the Greek king, uh, like Kaon. And uh, they are werewolf supremacists, for lack of a better term. I have not come up with a better term for it. They think that werewolves are the superior species and that they are meant to rule over humanity. Whereas the Remen, or the children of Remus, werewolves, believe that they are meant to work with humanity and, you know, help make things good. And then there's a smaller faction. They are not really like a, in the main series, but I have something planned for them. There is a small faction who are followers of Fenris, the Norse wolf Fenris. And uh, they basically just want to watch the world burn. So they're fun. So... I cannot believe it's been almost 40 minutes already. But it has been a fun time, actually. So I hope you guys have been having fun, too. But... <laughs> yes. Yeah, I have a feeling people would really like the, the Fenris. My original plan was that these wolves who believe they are descended from Lycaon... We're going to be the followers of Fenris. And I, you know, I had this great cool name for them. And then I started watching Supernatural. And Supernatural had a, a group of werewolves that they were called the Maw of Fenris. And I was like, well, now I can't do this. So I had to rework everything. But that's the upside to working on the same book for like eight years. You have a lot of time to let the story grow and change. So... <laughs> That might be the only upside to working on the same novel for that long. But everybody works at their own pace, so it's okay. Yeah, it was in one of the seasons that, that wasn't... I don't think it was as good. And it was just like the one episode. The one where... Um, I think it was that one where... What's his name? Garth. Garth became a werewolf. It was that episode. It was weird. I liked it because it had werewolves, but, you know. Again, Supernaturals with the all werewolves are evil kind of thing. and, and well, Let's be fair. Supernatural was all Supernatural was evil. Well, not all. Most of it. A lot of it. Anyway. I actually still have, like, two seasons of Supernatural I haven't watched, and I don't know if I'm going to or not. Yes, Lycaon, I love the story of Lycaon, even though it's it's pretty horrible. It is. Yes, Steve, give me the werewolf urban fantasy. I love it. But you also have to do your sci-fi story first, too, because I need to know what happens. But I gotta finish my books too, so you guys can read them. So <laughs> five years away. I know the feeling, Sting. I'm so excited for stuff that happens later in my series, and I have a while before I get there. But I can't tell you that stuff because spoilers. And he's sulking like he doesn't know. <laughs> okay well if you guys don't have any questions I think I'm gonna go ahead and go um, this has been fun we will definitely have to do this again because it's been really really great yes Zima has a great arc I can't wait for you to know what happens to Zima she's one of my favorites she's a pretty great character so, all right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and go. Thank you for being here and watching. Um, I think everybody who's here is already subscribed to my channel. But anybody who watches this later, if you want to see more, 
don't forget to subscribe. I post new videos on Sundays. I've been on hiatus for May, but I am back and I will have a new video on Sunday. And I think you guys are going to like it. So, yes, I had fun too. Thank you guys for being here. It's been great. I'm definitely going to do this again sometime because I love it. And you guys are awesome and I enjoy talking to you. So, all right. I will see you guys next time and you can see me on Sunday. Now I'm going to get her start working on writing. So yeah. Later y'all. <laughs> Bye everyone.